you spend time talking to scientists, especially physicists, and you'll eventually hear about grand unified theories, the theories of everything that are going to solve all the problems and explain everything that we can see. Well, we're going to explore what that sort of thing looks like. Is it achievable? And what do we do with it as Christians as we investigate and talk about that with Michael Gillen? Michael, once again, it's good to have you here hey, today. Yeah, fantastic. I'm looking forward to this one. I, I enjoy talking about these things with other <laughs> yeah, physicists because yeah, there's, there's a background. And this is fun. I mean, it, yeah. I could do this all day and twice on Sunday. <laughs> but, but, you know, it is interesting, uh, you know, even from my earliest days in undergraduate, there's this discussion of the grand unified theories oh, yeah. and this theory of everything mm, yeah. that unifies all the fundamental yeah. interactions. Yeah. That basically will explain everything we have yeah. to see out there. I'm just yeah. kind of curious. What are your thoughts as you think about that theory of everything? And will we find it? And what are we going to do when we, if we do? Well, you know, I, I think absolutely. And I, same with me in grad school and all, of the, you know, the grand unified theory. And, and, and Einstein, you know, spent mm -hmm. the, the last decades of his life mm -hmm. uh, in Princeton trying to find that theory, that theory of everything. And so as scientists, we have to ask ourselves this many decades later, it hasn't been found yet, is this truly a pot of gold or is it the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it real or is it mythical? Okay. And so uh, only time will tell. Who can, who can say? But let's, let's just establish right off the bat that when we as scientists talk about the theory of everything, it really isn't everything. You know, it doesn't... Not by a long shot. When so, we, so what does it miss? If it well, so, so, so what it means is that it's an attempt to try to unify these four forces that we're aware of, right? Mm -hmm. The weak, the strong, the electromagnetic, and gravity. Mm -hmm. Those are the four forces that we feel kind of push and pull throughout the universe and make things happen, right? right? They animate the universe. And so the grand unified theory or the theory of everything is an attempt to come up with one theory, just one elegant, streamlined theory mm -hmm you know, that just explains how all these four forces work. And we haven't succeeded. Now we have well, well, I mean, we've succeeded partially in that we've got the electromagnetic and wheat theory. Or kind yeah, of partially, but so we, we haven't succeeded in all Fair four. Enough. I okay, mean, we, so. you know, it's like, it's, like, it's like going to the racetrack. You know, we, maybe we call the winner and maybe the runner-up, but we haven't gotten that trifecta. In this case, the, what would that be, the quad quad <laughs> effect or uh, something whatever like it takes that. Four we together, haven't gotten yeah. all four. No, we right. haven't. But there, you know, we're undertaking, like in the 60s, for example, uh, uh, let me even go back further. You go back in the 20s when quantum mechanics was being developed. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of excitement and anticipation that, wow, quantum mechanics is going to provide us with the, the kind of the, uh, the, the vehicle mm -hmm. uh, for this grand unified theory, right? The theory of everything. Right. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, uh, and that didn't pan out. As we created these quantum field theories, we were able to unify maybe some of them, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. And then there came uh, uh, the bosonic string theory in the mm -hmm. 60s, right? The bosonic string theory was able to um, kind of uh, combine gravity with bosons, which are these particles mm -hmm. that can, two of them can occupy the same place at the same time. I don't want to get too yeah. technical for your audience, <laughs> but these are particular kinds of particles that behave very right. weirdly. And, but we still couldn't get the other particles, mm -hmm. the fermions. And so the whole point is that all these decades, even since Einstein died, we have tried and tried and tried with quantum field theories, mm -hmm. with string theories, and uh, you know, on and on and on to try to get all four theories, uh, all four forces under the same roof, mm -hmm. and we haven't succeeded. So you know, will we? I think we will. What, I, so I th I'm curious, <clears throat> why do you think we will? Because my, my assessment would be, you know, if God's the creator, we would expect that kind of unity, yeah, if you yeah, will. Yeah, so absolutely. Out of that. But even, even I, and I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I, I, as a Christian, I, I, I do ultimately believe, yes, there is going to be a kind of a unifying element mm -hmm. because there was a single being that created the whole thing. And so out of his mind, out of his lips came this universe um, as described in the Bible. So yes, um, if I put my scientist hat on, then that kind of encourage me, mm -hmm. encourages me to believe, yes, we will find a unified field there. Will it be quantum in nature? I'm not so sure. Um, I think we may have to go, and we've gone through a lot of revolutions, um, but I think we may have to go through maybe a few more before we actually do get that a structure we need to come mm -hmm. up with the unified field theory um, or the unified theory of all four forces. But I, I do, th I think they will. But again, the key thing for people to keep in mind is that we're speaking hyperbolically, right? When we say the mm -hmm. theory of everything, 
because I'll leave you with this thought. The reason science um, will never come up with a theory truly of everything that includes human beings and their behavior is that even something as commonplace as love between two individuals, it's not even logical. Because, uh, you know, you say there's, a, there's something called the transitive property in, in logic. It says if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. I'll say it again. Uh -huh. If A equals B and B equals C, then it follows that A equals C. It's a transitive property. It's a very simple property in logic. So you say, okay, if, um, if uh, Mario loves his daughter Maria and Maria loves Bubba, it does not follow that the father loves Bubba. Uh -huh. And we know that. that, that that's a, that's a pro, and Romeo and Juliet, I mean, that's that uh -huh. kind of intransitivity, that kind of illogical uh, behavior among humans uh, is, is enshrined. So when we speak about the theory of everything, yes, let's hope we can unify the four forces. But also, Jeff, we may find another fourth. Mm -hmm. We may find a fifth, fourth, a sixth uh, force in, in this dark energy, in this dark matter. Uh, but I think eventually we will find the theory of everything as long as you understand that everything, as science understands it, isn't really everything.